Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the example of your Son, who came not to be served, but to serve. We give thanks for the opportunity to serve the people and places of our borough. We pray that our meeting this evening will cause each and every person to flourish as you would intend. We pray for good relationships between our council members, strong accountability, sound decisions, effective budgeting, and servant hearts. And by the power of your Holy Spirit, would you give wisdom for all policies and decisions as we look to recover from the pandemic and continue to slow the spread of the new variant concern? Would you pour out your blessing tonight so that each and every one of us would be a blessing to others? In Jesus Christ's name we pray. two minutes of the meeting held on the 22nd of September 2021. I will move the acceptance of these as a correct record. Can I put the minutes to the vote? The minutes are accepted. Item three, first announcements, Queen's birthday list. I wish to congratulate Joanne Curry, a former student at St Mary's in Aslet, on receiving the MBE for her services to charity. B, Team Wigan Awards. I would like to congratulate members of staff from our HR and OD department who won awards in public service, People Managers Association Awards, and also the GM Health and co champion awards. Well done to everyone involved. Item C, in Bloom Awards. I'm pleased to report that Wigan Borough has won many in Bloom Awards 2021. These will be outlined in Council Reedy's portfolio holder update, therefore, I will not list the many awards won this year. However, I would like to thank all the community groups that took part and received awards and certificates. And on behalf of the Council, I would like to congratulate everyone who took part in the competition. Item D, Safer Street Funds. Wigan Council was successful in securing almost £274,000 of funding to improve our public spaces at night after a successful bid to the Home Office for the safety of women at night fund. 
Wigan was the only successful bidder in Greater Manchester and was, was one of only four successful bidders across the whole of the North West. Anthony, death of former mayor or consort Harry Smethurst. It is with deep, deep regret that I refer to the death on the 9th of November 2021 of former nurse consort Harry Smethers. Harry leaves behind his beloved wife, Eunice, as well as two children, Stephen and Martin. Eunice and Martin are both serving councillors for the Adam War, and also three grandchildren, Rachel, Daniel and Polly, and one great grandchild, Connor. Details of the funeral service will be forwarded to members. As yet, Harry has not been repatriated back to the UK. I will now invite members of the council to express their condolences in respect of the former mayor's consort, Harry Smethers. Would any like, members like to speak? Leader. Thank you, thank you, Madam Member. Uh, I'm someone who, who, who's known our new Harry for a, a great number of years. And certainly Harry was a character and a, and a, and a force to be reckoned with. And what I realised very quickly, he was such a rock to Eunice and the family. And I do know that Harry will be sadly missed, particularly by Eunice and Martin and all the grandchildren. And I can certainly say that during his time as the Nurse Consul, he was certainly there at Eunice's side at every event and every, every attendance that he needed to be there. And he was an absolutely magnificent and on behalf of the council, I'd like to say our condolences to, to you and the family, as we know what really suffered in this battle. Thank you, Madam. Thank you, Minister. Again, well, thanks. Well, I've written to offer condolences and other thoughts go through the family for their loss. Item 4, declarations of interest. The monitoring office was provided advice to all members and relevant guidance has been issued. Members are asked to consider relevant interests for the purpose of this meeting. And if there are any interests, members must leave the room during the relevant item. Please fill out the form on your agenda and return this to the Democratic Services Offices at the end of the meeting. Item 5, update from Cabinet Portfolio Holders. I invite Councillor Prescott to speak on this point on the impact of COVID-19 on environmental services. Councillor Prescott. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Madam Mayor, I felt I would take this opportunity to highlight the ongoing impact of the disruption caused by the COVID pandemic and its continuing impact on the Council's operational workforce as it would have been only too easy to believe that everything was returning to normal. And quite clearly, given recent events, that is not the case. The COVID infection rates, both nationally and regionally, remain high, and we await to see the impact that the Omicron variant will have, given that it seems to be more transmissible than the Delta variant. Even before this, the impact of COVID on the workforce has placed significant pressures on our frontline service delivery across the borough. So to put this into perspective, and in relation to our operational services, we have lost many thousands of working days to the pandemic since it began, the equivalent being approximately 45 members of staff down on any one day. And that's in addition to normal, uh, normal reasons for absence from work, annual leave, illness for other reasons than COVID. Many members of staff have been, have been redeployed to support other critical services across the council and that was to ensure that our more vulnerable tenants and residents have been supported and kept safe. It should also be appreciated that in addition to the aforementioned, that the extraordinary levels of waste have been collected over the last 18 months, with an approximate 18,000 tonnes of additional waste collected across all waste streams, that on top of the normal collection rates you would normally expect. It is true to say that we have experienced some blips in service instances of, being, of bins being collected later than normal. But given all of those additional pressures I have highlighted, we have kept those instances to an absolute minimum, which is a testament to the dedication of our waste collection teams. It should also be noted that across the country, some councils even took the decision 
to cancel those collection services. But as you'd expect here in Wigan, we are proud to say we have kept our essential services running at full capacity. We have unfortunately, though, had to deal with an increased level of environmental crime, flight tipping, with a reported incidence up by 60%, as well as littering and dog farming incidents up significantly, which, as I'm sure you will appreciate, has put additional strains on the demands of frontline services. Although it has been gratifying to see that during the pandemic we are seeing some community litter keeping groups come to the fore who are helping to keep their own areas free from litter, showing great community spirit, for which I offer my thanks to those groups on behalf of the Council. I would, Madam Mayor, encourage everyone to continue to take those simple actions to help stop the spread of the virus. It is essential that we do not act as though the virus has gone away, because clearly it hasn't. And as the new variant has shown us, it continues to and will continue to affect us all into the foreseeable future. And how it may still further impact on the services remains to be seen. So, it is our declared mission and will remain in our mission to ensure that our residents stay safe and to provide the highest standard of service. And we will do anything that we can do to achieve those aims. I would very much appreciate everyone's continued patience and support during what is likely to be a very difficult period ahead. I look forward to and anticipate the continued generosity of spirit, support and understanding the people of this great world are renowned for. So let's appreciate the tireless work of our, of our being crews who will be out on our streets in all weathers providing a vital service for every household in the borough. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, I will now invite Council Reedy to speak on in room. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, and before I start, can I thank you for allowing me to do this and stealing your thunder and saying it's really nice to be fair. I think just to run on the back of what Paul said, if we look at our parks and open spaces and the pressure the staff have been under. It's amazing what we've achieved in the parks and where we've kept them from people of this borough. Uh, in blue has been always a success for us, uh, but this year I think it's been even better than we, we would have ever anticipated. And because Madam Mayor said we've got the best large city sorry, all over the borough, uh, and that was a goal, so we couldn't get any better than that. Uh, and in our parks itself, Main's Park got silver, Jubilee Park got gold, Pennington got gold. And, and the small town one, Shevington, got gold as a small park. I think in addition to that, A11 Park got gold in the best tourist attraction, which is a massive award for that one, if you look at that. And there's so, I could list so many here and speak to them, but you'd probably get bored of me speaking. So I don't really want to kind of go through the individual list, but we'll send that out to members. But so much work and partnership has gone in the communities and the Green Spaces team, uh, the communities team, and in, in particular, uh, Paul Gallagher, who, who took the mantle over this and really took it over and did a tremendous job. Just want to probably outline two areas. Uh, so individual, like I said, I think this is not about individuals, but I've mentioned Paul because he led on this. And one person in particular who really actually took this on this was Eric Holcomb. And Eric got a really deserved award from him for the work he's done over many, many years. And I think all these awards in England and actually are pertinent to what we do in the borough. Uh, and Amlet, who we entered for the first year this year, got a national award. So really, it's a credit to everybody. And one of the first things the leader said, I think when we just came into COVID, how important our parks were for people. And myself, Council Reading, Council Prescott, are working on that as a partnership, and making sure we better that and get better at everything we do. So hopefully next year we'll be more and more. And it's up to you guys here to get more and more community involved in the group, because it has really been a success. Uh, but it's a really big thanks to everybody who's been involved in that. I'm just going to take a little bit of light, Madam Mayor, uh, and just to make an announcement. In the world of, uh, uh, of sadness and, uh, and everything that goes on and people are suffering, behind the scenes, our staff have been amazing with what they've done. And Paul touched on that with the, uh, with the people at Frontline. One of the things we've been working on uh, in, in the culture department, for the community department, everybody working together, was putting together the creative people and places bit. Uh, it's a long process uh, that we have to go through, uh, and it's a collaboration. So the people who are involved in this are the old folks, Wigan Athletic Community Trust, Groundwork, 
one piece of wildlife trust and that's the defense of and i've got to say it's an air and i think this is i can put me line up here probably the best in the country that we've achieved here i don't want to come out with any figures at the moment because we're trying to but as anything we're trying to swing squeeze every last drop about how we can bring people and get money we can get out but we're talking six figures over a three-year period for us to spend on our community, linking in with arts and culture, linking in with our business partners, and keep them doing the community wealth building. It's so exciting that we can bring everything into that. There's so many elements today, it's unbelievable. And for us to gain that extra funding in the time that we're in now, it's a real threat for everybody who's in behind it. I'm just like, I can stand up here and talk about it, but the work's been going on behind the scenes and everybody else. So it's a massive thank you to everybody who's been doing that, and everybody in the room. Thank you, Madam. Thank you, I invite the Deputy Leader, Councillor Cunley, to speak at this point on the Government Bank Care Plan Social Care. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, but if you remember at the last Council meeting, the Government had just announced the social care cap for £86,000 for the amount of people that have to pay. And I did at the time point out that that was grossly unfair. Because actually, the average house in Wigan costs about £165,000. And if it was an elderly couple bought who, at some point in their life, required social care, that would wipe out that asset. And yet, the average cost of a house in London and Surrey, with many houses approaching Ordinary houses approaching a million pounds. Those people would retain 90% of their assets in their life, while someone in Britain the wealth would be wiped out. And if you remember in 2019 on the steps of Downing Street, Boris Johnson said he had a plan to fix social care for growth. It took him two years to start letting us know what it is. And when his mothers know what it is, and the white paper was announced last week, it's actually, and there are some good bits of it, the aspirations in there about improving housing options for people requiring social care for the older and the disabled, and looking at the potential for the use of technology, really important. But actually, something this Labour Council has been following for the last seven or eight years. So the Tory government, the clear plan that Boris has, we could have told him seven to eight years ago. One of the aims that we have in social care in Wigan is to ensure that people who receive social care live the life they choose. In the place they call home, with people that they love, and doing the things that matter most to them. In terms of housing that the government put in the white paper and housing options, what have we done over the last seven years? New Bills, Tamfield, Mayfield, Marigold Lodge, Hinder Lodge, Little Lane, 29 Bevington Street, many others, and actually big development in Lee at Warsdale, now around providing 51 apartments, housing and extra care for all the people. And the potential for technology. For several years now, we equipped the Ancliff bungalow, not far from here, just around the corner, with all the latest technology so that uh, social workers, NHS staff, health visitors, district nurses, GPs could see what was available in terms of modern technology to help somebody living in pain. So the aspirations we've been following for many years. But this white paper doesn't deal with the immediate pressures on social care. And it doesn't fund the reform necessary to deal with the future of that social care. The very few resources we're getting from this tax rise, the natural insurance rise, uh, will virtually cover 
because once somebody hits the £86,000 cap, they no longer have to pay for the social care. This council will have to pick up that bill. And obviously some of the additional money will be for this council to pick up that bill. The other is about a billion pound over a three year period for social care, which is 300 million pound a year, shared across 150 local authorities with responsibility for adult social care. So it equates to about two million pounds. So I'm looking to deal with the situation we face. It doesn't deal with the 100,000 vacancies that exist in social care. It doesn't deal with the low pay or increasing pay within the sector. And actually, the amount that they're contributing towards unpaid carers, those many people who care for their own relative and are unpaid carers who do a tremendous amount, the amount of financing the government are giving equates to £1.60 per year. It's a bit of a cheap, really. £1.60 a year to the unpaid carer. Right, I'll just finish with millions of workers are paying more tax, not to improve their family's care and stop their life savings being wiped out, but to protect the wealthiest in this country in able to maintain their homes. Thank you. Thank you. Item 6, Mayoral 2022-2023. This item has now been deferred. Item 7, Constitutional Issues. I would like to ask the Chief Executive, Alison Mackenzie Fallon, to introduce the next two items on the agenda. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Casual Vacancy. Owing to the resignation of Councillor Stephen Jones, a casual vacancy had arisen for the Green Lord. The by-election took place on the 25th of November 2021. Councillors elected on the 14th of October 2021 on the 25th of November 2021. Welcome to the new members. I would like to report that Samantha Brown was duly elected to the Lee West Ward and Samuel Fleming was duly elected to the Bray Ward in the by-elections held on the 14th of October 2021 and the 25th of November 2021 respectively. Thank you. Thank you. Item C, appointment of Royal Park Quality Representative Governors. The Council has requested to approve the nominations for the appointment of skilled governors as set out on page 19 of the Council agenda. Are the nominations moved? Are the nominations seconded? Thank you. Do any other members wish to contribute? Lindy, do you wish to sum up? I don't think there's nothing to sum up, is there? So, item 8, policy and budget framework items. Item 8, financial quarter 1, capital treasury management. At pages 22, 25 to 54, we have a report that seeks approval of the treasury management position, the adoption of the amended capital programme, and for approval of the proposed increasing fees for referred to an appendix five of the report. The report was considered by Cabinet at its meeting on the 5th of August 2021 and approved. I invite the leader to remove the recommendation. Project to remove the recommendation, Madam Mayor. Thank you. Is the recommendation seconded? Right to second, Madam Mayor. Deputy Leader, do you wish to speak now or reserve your right to speak until later in the debate? I'll reserve it. Thank you. Do any of the members wish to contribute? No. Item B, Housing Revenue and Current Rent Setting Report 20. Oh, sorry. 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 Can I put the report to the vote? Thank you, Councillor. Any against? Well, the report is gone, uh, oh, thank you. Is that with Miss Chokes? Sorry. 
just one. Item 8, the policy and budget for Edward County Teams. At pages 25 to 54, we have a report that seeks approval of the Treasurer Management position, the adoption of the amended capital programme, and for approval of the proposed increase in fees for the referred to in appendix 5 of the report. The report was considered by Cabinet at its meeting on the 5th of August and approved. I think we've already done this one, haven't we? I'm just sorry. I've lost my page. I'm so sorry. Can we take a vote on the report, please? Thank you. Item B, as in revenue account rent setting report 2022-2023. Can I remind members who are councillors tenants that they are of personal and prejudicial interest in this item, but they can stay in the meeting and vote. On pages 55 to 64 of the agenda, we have a report which was presented to the housing advisory panel prior to being considered by the cabinet on 25th of November. The council has requested to agree the recommendations as set out on page 58 of the agenda. I invite the leader to re move the recommendation. I think we move the recommendation, Madam Mayor. Thank you. Is the recommendation seconded? Right to second, Madam Mayor. Thank you. Do any other members wish to contribute? Well, can we put the item to the vote? Oh, I'm very sorry, Councillor. Would you like to speak on this item? Yes. wish to contribute. Thank you. Can I put the report to the vote? Do you wish to come back in, Council Conway? No, thank you. Can I put the report to the vote? Lee, did you wish to sum up? Thank you, Leader. Can we put the report to the vote, please? Thank you. <laughs> Item C, Treasury Management Hardly Yearly Review. Pages 65 to 82 of the agenda. We have a report which was considered by the Audit Governance and Standards Committee and Cabinet. The Council has requested to agree the recommendation of Cabinet which was to agree the report and that the leader to remove the recommendation. I'm happy to support it, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Leader. Is the recommendation seconded? I'm happy to second it, Madam Mayor, and we will reserve the right to speak. Thank you. Do any other members wish to contribute? No, thank you. Leader, do you wish to sum up or speak on this? No, Madam Mayor, happy to accept the report and move to the vote. Thank you. All those in favour of accepting the recommendations as set out in the report? Is there anyone against? No, thank you. Item D, retender of external audit contracts. On pages 83 to 96 of the agenda, we have a report which was considered by the Audit Governance and Standards Committee. The council has requested to approve option three in the report. I invite the leader to remove the, to move the recommendations. I'm quite happy to approve the recommendations, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Leader. Is the recommendation seconded? 
Well, I'm happy to certainly be approved. Thank you, Deputy Leader. Do any other members wish to contribute? No, can we put the item to the vote, please? Thank you. Is there anyone against? No. Item 9, Audit Governance and Standards Committee Annual Report. On pages 97 to 110 of the agenda, we have a report which was considered by the Audit Governance and Standards Committee in Cabinet. The Council has requested to agree the recommendation of both meetings, which was to agree the report. Is the recommendation moved? The recommendation is moved, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Leader. Is the recommendation seconded? It's a second, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Deputy Leader. Do any other members wish to contribute? Councillor Bryler? Yes, Councillor Bryler. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor, for letting me speak on the item. Yeah, I've uh, been part of the Standards Committee um, this year. This report, I think, doesn't look very rough uh, with regards to uh, standards and high public uh, engagement. Uh, what, what sometimes we face as councillors is fault complaints, which is, should be dealt with at the legal level, but they don't. It's time to intimidate elected members uh, by employing solicitors on fault complaints. Sorry? Thanks, Lord Brown. Can you stick to what's in the report, please, and not diverse from the information contained in the report? Stick to what's in the report, please. Thank you. Well, I don't. It's in the report of it. I standards of council and complaints and whatever. And the next thing, you try to stop me from speaking how I see fit. Thanks, Labrilla. I don't want you to stop speaking. I'm quite happy for you to get up and speak, as always. But please stick to what's in the report and don't divulge them. In the report, Madam Burr, again, it says a very high standard the council expects from councillors with, with complaints from me. We need to get clarification that it's dealt with properly by the legal department before it comes and intimidates councillors. That's all I'm saying. Councillor, there is no intimidation whatsoever. It's I'm a sorry, very legal it. process that you know. Can you please stick to the report because you're actually wasting your speaking time. Thank you. It's an absolute disgrace. The people in the audience, sir, you need to read these reports. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Brewer. <laughs> Item 10, questions and comments on Drake Point 1. <laughs> Lady, do you wish to sum up and answer Councillor Brewer's comments? No, I don't think I can answer you. Whatever you said to Council Bailey, it doesn't miss anyway. But what I would like to say is it's an excellent report, and I thank the people for putting it together. And what I don't need is somebody hectic while I'm just speaking. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Leader. Deputy Leader, would you like? No, we're okay. Thank you. Councillor Brewer, that's not a point of explanation, as you know. Thank you. Can we have all those in favour of accepting the recommendations as set out in the report? Sure, please. Are there any against? Item 9, Audit Governance and Standards Committee, Annual Report. On pages... Sorry, item 10, questions and comments under rule 8.1, A rules of procedure. 
Council always done and wishes to make the following comment on the confident council scrutiny of minutes. Minutes of the 11th of October 2021. Minute 13, return of the workforce staff working arrangements. Councillor Winston. Uh, thank you, Alan. Um, hopefully, just indulge me for a second. Um, while I offer my congratulations to the two new councillors that have been elected, Councillor Gray and Planning, because irrespective of our political differences, um, we are all here to be hopefully benefit the borough. So, congratulations on that. So, well, congratulations on your on your election. So, uh, welcome, and, uh, and I hope we have a good working relationship. There's no reason why we should. <laughs> um, but uh, thank you, Madam Mayor, for letting us comment on the 13th of the Council meeting of the 11th of October. Uh, I was particularly drawn to the report that talks about a new way of working post pandemic, and I think this is really important. Taking on Councillor Prescott's uh, comments earlier on, obviously we don't know what's going to happen in the next few weeks, months, or even year. Uh, obviously none of us uh, can, can tell what's going to happen. But I think what is important, and some of the lessons that we have learned from the past 18 months, is the value of social interaction, particularly in the working environment. And we've got to remember those people who are living on their own, who that perhaps that's their, their own social interaction in the whole working week. Uh, by coming into the office, by working with other people. And, and it also benefits those. I actually think it benefits the working environment when we're actually working collaboratively, collaboratively together in, in, a, in an office environment as well. And I think the other thing that we need to uh, also not underestimate is actually how much our town centres and city centres depend upon people going into those town and city centres and the footfall that that generates for those businesses uh, across all our tens, uh, all our ten centres, particularly Wigan, but obviously in other places where we've got offices based. So, um, what I don't want to happen is, as we move forward, the, the default comes working from home, not the other way around. And I think it's absolutely right to get the balance right. And we know that technology has moved on, you know, leaps and bounds since we moved into this pandemic. I remember right at the beginning of it, we were trying to do some interviews on Skype and, uh, and, and all kinds of other various things. It probably wasn't the best experience any of us ever had uh, at a virtual meeting, but obviously we seem to have made quite a lot of progress um, over the past 18 months on that. So I, I just think that that's really important that we do that. The other point in this report was that how that had a knock on effect to our uh, residents and the services that we provide. And it's particularly um, interesting to me um, a part of the report that talks about the survey. And it, it didn't actually say how many people took part in the survey. So I'm always a little bit worried about surveys that give me a percentage but don't give me any numbers. Um, but he said that 80% of the people actually wanted more services online. Now, this does not correspond at all with. The, the feedback I get from my residents because residents are extremely frustrated when they try to pick the council, when they try to contact us, they pick the past from pillar to post and they can't get a resolution. So before we sort of like go whole scale, we need to put more and more services exclusively online. I think we need to take a step back because that's not what our residents uh, are telling us at all. So um, before we rush into this, I do think we need to look at that. The other thing as well is that if the people that were taking part in this survey, if it was all done exclusively online, what a surprise! 80% of people online said, I want more services online. Well, that's not really reaffirming anything, is it? It's just telling us what they like to do. So, we do need to make sure that we're actually listening to all our residents and not just those that engage online. Madam Mayor, uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor Wayne I invite Councillor Raymond to respond. Madam Mayor, during the pandemic, at the direction of government, all office-based staff were required to work from home, and many, as you know, were redeployed to frontline critical care services. Due to the broad range of services we provide and professionals within our workforce, we have received a range of feedback from our workforce. It became apparent from some of the feedback and monitoring of audit productivity and quality in different directorates that there were significant benefits to working from home. For others in different services and departments, the experience and feedback was very different. That is why 
we are taking a blended approach to returning to the office in order to maintain the quality of services, productivity, and workforce well-being, but also ensuring the advantages that being in collaborative spaces brings for our staff. By the way, our investment in hybrid technology will support this blended approach and ensure we retain the productivity and environmental and financial savings from less travel for regional and national meetings, events, and conferences, and reduction in our fixed costs. By the way, our resident survey last year informed us that people would like to see more kinds of services available online. Throughout the pandemic, more and more people have had to use digital means for many crucial services, not only council services, but services such as contacting their GPs. And through our TechMates program, we, had, we were able to support those who are in need of help and who lack skill and confidence. We know that having well-designed digital services is a key priority for many of our residents but this doesn't mean at all that we do that at the expense of telephone and face-to-face -face service provision. We have lots of support available for those residents who find it difficult to access online services, and our life centers and libraries also provide support with access to wider online services, such as help with claims for universal credit and job seeking. However, by ensuring the increase, the increase in range accessibility, and quality of our digital offer, we make it easier for those who need to contact us via telephone or face-to-face -face because of their needs or complexity of their inquiries. Madam Mayor, as Councillor Robin Stanley has said himself, the situation with the pandemic is still very uncertain, and government's advice and guidelines on social distancing, face masks, and face-to-face -face service provision keep changing, and today, with their plan B is a great example. So we are keeping a very close eye on what is happening regionally, locally, and nationally, and we remain agile in how we adapt to changing circumstances. But whatever we do, the health and well-being of our staff and our residents remain our utmost priority. And can I just finally say to Councillor Winstanley that we take government's advice and guidelines very seriously, even when the government doesn't take it itself. And it doesn't matter whether that advice is on face-to-face -face meetings, face masks, or Christmas parties. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Warren. Item 10.2. Councillor Gray wishes to make the following comment under 8.1a of the Rules of Procedure. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I'll leave you to the other end of the minute. I would like to know from me receiving a copy of the financial report. Of Wigan Council, which clearly shows we have cash in the hand of 45,000 plus. That, that officers, that all officers in the relevant department say we have no money for the basic of requests for investment in my ward of England Green. Our, our needs are clearly not met due to the loans to all local authorities up to five million pounds with only an interest of one percent. I suggest that ward councillors have more control of the ward council tax of 5.5 million pounds uh, to address all residents' issues. Now this is very important. We are elected members and we answer to the people every four years or in the case of uh, 2023, two years ago, two years later. Um, basic needs of, 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 of the region utilising the 5.5 million pounds is essential for elected members to dip into 
instead of going to with a begging bowl for going to auction to get the basic investment that he would dream of. It's absolutely a disgraceful. You can't try get an assurance from the leader, which I know he's going to send it to him, give him a tight to some sarcastic comments tonight. This is what it's all about, leader. The people pay for facilities and you don't deliver. If somebody must be telling these officers, we've no money, we've no money. But we have. I pay a thousand pounds council tax. And what do I see for that? My bins are empty, street lighting. But what about investments in the area? Right? What, 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 what's, what's going on? People need better so This was meant to be a comment and a question and answer session for you and the leader. Can you carry on with your comment or please take a seat? Thank you. Is he not going to talk to us? It isn't a question. You asked, could you make a comment under the rules of procedure? You didn't ask, could you ask a question, Councillor Grayler? Councillor Raymond's going to respond when you've finished in a minute. Thank you. Okay, and Councillor Raymond can't wait to see your answer. That we need to have more involvement in the money developed from council tax to 5.5 million pounds to help and get a decent answer. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Grayler. I invite Councillor Raymond to respond. Thank you, Member, for this opportunity. And thank you, Councillor Grady, for your passion. The £45,000 that you mentioned as cash in hand for your question is already committed, but not yet spent. So that's not available to support any revenue request. And in response to your suggestion, for ward councillors having more control of the ward council tax, the council does not put it by ward, we budget for the whole borough. So that suggestion cannot be implemented. I'm sorry. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Ray. 10.3, Councillor Gerard wishes to ask the following question on Greg Point 1A of the rules of procedure. Councillor Gerard. Similar topic where it's one, which is good to see. I'm sure you'll be debating it. But uh, I'm hoping that the lead can set out the Council's position on all faulty evictions, which is basically what we call Section 21. And join me in urging the government to move forward with legal legislation, as you deserve, to stop this practice. Uh, it came to light uh, a couple of weeks ago that a, a new development in Hobbiton only a couple of years old, was sold to a property developer. And within 24 hours of the deed for sale, Section 21 notice was issued to 10 residents or 10 properties in the block of flats. The developer doesn't even know what he's going to do with it. He's going to flip it, sell it now, just before Christmas. These people, good people, are now searching for, for, for housing. Due to COVID, the government was, was supposed to uh, bring this forward and make it illegal to sell these second and fault evictions. But now, due to COVID, it's been put on a back burner. And I think we need to, as a council, urge the government to bring this forward so people will have to go through this distress. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Gerard. I invite Councillor Gamble to respond. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Gerard, for actually uh, posing the question. Um, we've made reference to the marginal fees or, or such on that slide. There. But um, what, what you're actually talking about is the Section 21 Housing Act, which was in uh, 1988, uh, which enables private landlords to repossess their properties from a short, short haul tenancy and uh, without having to establish fault on the part of the tenant. And no fault, so that's a no fault ground for eviction. 
uh, and it's a two-month notice, which obviously causes extreme distress to a number of families who have, uh, haven't done anything to warrant the, the actual uh, eviction notice, to section 21. I think, as, as you've alluded to, Councillor Gerard, you'll know that there was a, uh, there's going to be a review and reform of the section 21. And in, 20, in that 2019, uh, the government stated it was going to abolish the no-fault evictions. And it was included in this Queen's speech, both in 2019 and 2021, when there was a commitment to provide details of the full reform package in autumn of this year. Saddle was still waiting. We were expecting something to come through in 2022, and that has led us to not receive the date. But I'm sure we'll be making uh, very strong uh, representations when that uh, information comes out. But what we have been doing, we've been very fortunate. The council has actually been very proactive, and uh, we haven't been delayed because of the lack of legislation. And we've put things in a number of ways to support tenants who rent from private landlords. Uh, we've set up an ethical lettings work agency working with uh, 40, at the moment, 40 private landlords. We're hoping to extend that because we have got some really good private landlords within the borough, along with the ones that are actually causing a number of us issues and it actually puts strain on the council resources as well when this happens. And our, our um, homelessness team actually step in and try and support those families. So, uh, but we're actually looking at trying to work with uh, those families who are becoming homeless as a result of the Section 21, looking at a deposit scheme that will actually help them. As you know, we've, we've actually got an ambitious programme for housing. We've talked about needing to provide more homes for people. Uh, Councillor Conway has actually outlined a number of those uh, social rent properties that uh, we've actually been doing. We've got an ambitious programme that's actually outlined in our housing uh, strategy for 2020. And we need to continue building more and developing more properties. We've purchased quite a number of properties as well, and we're working with uh, both the, the larger developers, but more recently, the small local developers to try and actually improve our home stock so that we've got an alternative for people to, uh, as well as um, the private sector. And we're going to continue to explore new ways to actually create new homes in the borough because that's something that we're desperate to do. We have a, 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 a lot of people wishing to have council properties, but we're also working with other social landlords. We've got quite a number of housing associations that operate in the borough, and we're trying to maximise our nominations to those organisations as well. You've, really, you've mentioned about the notion that uh, my colleagues uh, Sam Brown and Susan Greensmith are going to outline, and uh, the, I think there's going to be quite a number of things that we want to talk about it and I'm looking forward to hopefully that you and your colleagues will support that motion. I hope that answers your question for me. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Gamble. 10.4. Councillor Gerard wishes to ask the following question under 8.1 of the Rules of Procedure. Operation Sector uh, was in operation again in the borough, and in Greater Manchester. And across the uh, region, it got 413 hours off the streets of Greater Manchester. And the question is, will the council look even further with the police to tackle this worrying trend of children <coughs> having hours? Now, over the last year, unfortunately, we've seen two people murdered in our borough. Scott Anderton and Thomas Williamson. I know they can say their condolences to the family. Heard that. Uh, Operation Scepter, in its current form, is, is a success by its own way and we play. But I think we need to get to the root of the problem, which is edu education in schools and at all. Uh, more extracurricular activities, such as sport, which is open for all and for all to get kids interested into other things than just rolling about in gangs. You can see bus stations, parks, and you know, we've got operations we can help to tackle that. It, it's just we need to get to the, the root cause. And uh, so 
I just thought they'd be funny. Do what I thought. In, in schools, in, in homes, in the communities, in shops where I sell in half to the children, do a bit, a bit more. A bit more, you know, a bit more control over that. Do a bit more shop to them. So I'm just hoping we can uh, make a start to reduce this problem in, in the world. Thank you, Councillor Gerard. I now invite Councillor Anderson to respond. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, I also want to wish thank Councillor Gerard for his, um, his question. As Cabinet Member, I'm quite pleased to find some contingencies and Patrick Hill to reassure him that he will place into the disabled partnership in Sutton's if Patrick already worked closely with GMP and a range of community safety priorities. This includes an important priority to reduce domestic violence and crime and other. Council, GMP and other partners developed approaches together to prevent night crime, especially when this involves children and young people. Night crime was identified in Wigan and the Wigan Community Justice Plan as resulted in staff being trained in specialist and targeted programmes of the hand of blade and positive choices. Young people who are allocated to a caseworker for formal intervention undertake an assessment plus, and this seeks to identify young people who have been involved with the offence involving them and those who are vulnerable to being input by others, which may increase their risk of having them. Night crime is a priority and we included in the use of independent in my report data report presented every two months. If you look at the last six months, there were actually two offences of possession of a bladed article and four offences of possession of an offensive weapon involving young people in Wigan. Targeted Youth Support Services, TYSS, are responsible for the delivery of brain reach and diversion activities in response to youth and disorder behaviour. There are seven part-time posts to support each of the seven neighbourhoods. This provision not only educates those who are engaged, but also we also share intelligence and night crime with GMP as part of safeguarding. To ensure this work is targeted in the right areas, where daily operations lead to meetings involving a range of partners with the funding service are actually targeted. The Place of Community Safety Partnership also received a final reduction funding each year and now prioritised development and rollout of a virtual reality prevention programme which will roll out to all high schools over the coming months. This programme includes a focus on night crime and will be available to all high schools in the borough from spring 2022. TYSS has also explained some additional support and be up to schools represented the possibility of an exclusion where a young person is taking a night into school. This will ensure young people receive an appropriate intervention to reduce their risk of further occasions where they may be in possession of a blade. There's also a proposed new, there's also a new proposed Police Council's Health and Education Bill, which will bring new legal responsibilities to the place of community safety partnership and will include new powers in reducing their Youth justice measures will also be strengthened with alternatives to custody which promote rehabilitation while at the same time ensuring that children who commit serious offences and pose a risk to the public receive sentences that reflect the seriousness of their offending. We know that often young people carry knives and weapons for the feel and safe, and our work needs to be twofold. One, to increase education and awareness of the possible consequences of carrying knives, and two, addressing the issues that make them feel unsafe. We will also use our shared multi agency communication networks to educate and campaign against carrying and the use of knives in our communities. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Anderson. Item 11 notices of motion. A motion has been submitted by Councillor Wynne Stanley, which is set out on page 113 of the agenda. Councillor Wynne Stanley. Thank you, Madam Mayor, for allowing me to present this motion to full council. And I'm pleased that at long last this council has an opportunity to discuss these proposals and give its verdict on this very controversial plan for the redevelopment of Wigan Town Centre. I have to say it's extremely disappointing and frustrated that this council hasn't had an opportunity before now to discuss this. 
this is one of the biggest projects that this council has faced probably in the last 30 to 40 years, probably since the galleries was actually built. The only opportunity councillors have had to discuss this plan were two virtual briefings that, quite frankly, have left more questions than answers. For example, where's the money coming from? We're told that there's obviously money in the capital budget for it. We're told private investors will be coming forward and we will be getting grants. But which private investors? What grants have been secured? Is this home? What happens if this fails? What happens if the funding fails and isn't secured for this project? Where does the liability lie if the project fails? What is the scope and involvement of the Beijing Construction Group? What information has been given to this particular company? Will they own the freehold on any land? What compensation is going to be given to market traders and, uh, and retailers? The plan talks about a media centre and a place of destination for social events, which is fine. But we asked last week about what the market researchers told us. Commercially sensitive information, you can't be told that. Well, what about the leisure outlets and the restaurants? Who's going to come? We're nearly the, near the line, you know, it's nearly the commercially sensitive. Is what we get told all the time. It's quite secretive. It's like China. We found out last week that the council would be handed over the management of the market hall to a third party to provide it. Forgive me if this doesn't provide me with a great deal of confidence and makes me nervous because this council doesn't have a great record in dealing with third party management companies. Many residents haven't forgotten the Hay Hall debacle and the subsequent cost to the taxpayer. We also learned last week that Deloitte's are advising the council, and presumably not on minimum wage rates. Uh, I'd like to know how much they're actually being paid to charge their management fees on this. But the biggest disappointment of all is that this, the people of this borough aren't being listened to at all, and neither the market traders. A 5,000 signature petition was submitted to this council for the last council meeting, and that was dismissed out of hand to say it couldn't be debated at the last council meeting, similar to the way that my motion couldn't be debated at all. I thought that was a very brave or a very foolish decision by this council. No one, and I mean absolutely no one, is saying that we don't need to redevelop the town centre. But what I am calling for, along with other members of this council, and more, most importantly our residents and market traders, is a pause and to rethink this proposal. It needs to have full public support. We are in this meeting, we are acting on behalf of the people, given that we've been elected by the people to make decisions on their behalf. And I know under the current model that rests with cabinet, but that doesn't matter. It's still the responsibility of this council to take the people of the borough with us. And I thought part of the carbon economics of community wealth building was all part about taking the community with you and ensuring that you uh, make decisions that are based on it. I'm sure we'll hear from a motion from Councillor Cunliffe and uh, Councillor uh, Hamilton. Uh, Anderson, sorry. <laughs> Mixing you up with another league uh, colleague here, sorry. <laughs> um, having looked at the artist, the artist design for Market Hall and the town centre, in my, in my opinion, and I'm not a planner, but they're horrendous. It doesn't look good at all. It's not sympathetic to what I would expect to the heritage of Wigan Town Centre. These plans are in essence a mini version of a city centre development. Wigan isn't and never will be a city centre. And our unique position as a market town needs to reflect this. This is the wrong development in the wrong place at the wrong time. It isn't too late to stop this, this development. Yes, planning permission has been granted, I accept that. But we all know modifications can come forward for plans that have already been passed. So now is the right time to call for a moratorium on this. Go back to the residents, have a meaningful conversation. Not one of the normal consultations that we get from this council, where the, where the questions are skewed to get the answer you want. Or even the ones that, you know, people tell you one thing and then you still do something else. If we're going to take people with us, we need to make sure that it's meaningful and we're reflecting what the people want. And that's what we haven't done so far. This project started way back in 2018 when we secured the gallery for 8 million quid. We're now nearly entering 2022. A few more months won't make any difference to this. But getting the steam wrong will mean that this borough will have to live with the consequences of this in years to come. 
do the right thing, swallow your pride, support the motion tonight, and let's move forward. As, the, as our council motto says, progress with unity, not on the current pro process that we have, which doesn't take everyone with us. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you very much. Right, thank you, Councillor Marsh. Do any of the members wish to speak on the motion? Councillor Watson? I'd just like to echo some of the views and residents in the east of the borough who have got concerns about the cost of this ambitious project and will this cost continue to rise with the continued uh, rising costs of building materials. And then there's the uncertainty with the post-Covid world that we now live in. Is this the right time for this ambitious project? At a time where we're asking our residents, our most vulnerable, to uh, pay up to 3% in their rent. And then there's the added question of, will this be utilised by the whole borough? I think not. Not with attractive offers from Liverpool, Manchester, on our doorstep of our great, fantastic public transport network. And then there's also the human rights record of China, which only today, I believe, uh, the USA and Australia are boycotting the Winter Olympics in 2022 to a company, a state-owned company that we've awarded this contract to. So I think the cost isn't affected for the taxpayers of the whole borough. I think the timing is all wrong. And if we have to go forward with this, surely it should be a British company, if not a wicked company. Thank you, Madam Mayor, for allowing me to speak. Thank you, thank you, Watson. Thanks for press and wish to speak on this item. Thank you, Madam Mayor, for allowing me to respond to the motion this evening. Just so that we are all very clear regarding the petition that was referred to in the motion, very briefly by my point. The Council has a petition scheme that allows for a petition with 5,000 or more signatures to be considered by a full council. However, in this case, that's not happened. Instead, what we have is a motion moved by Council Winstanley, seconded by Council Marsh. And although the petition is referred to in the motion, other than that one thing, I have no formal connection whatsoever. The petition has, however, been used as a vehicle by Council Winstanley to support his motion. That being that the proposal for the redevelopment of the galleries lack public support. And on that basis, he calls for a moratorium or delay to the development of the galleries for an undetermined period of time. And that was with working to start early in the new year. In his motion, Councillor Woodstown refers to the 5,000 signatories on the petition. It actually says it's a significant number. Well, Madam Mayor, I would, I would make a counter argument that in fact it is a relatively small number. And that is in relation to the 326,000 people who actually live in the borough. Now, if we accept that all of those who signed the petition reside in the borough, uh, and you deduct the 5,000 off the 326,000 people, I'm sure you've got to do the maths, it gives you a figure of 321,000 people who did not sign the petition. Now, that is a significant figure, as I'm sure most of you will agree. My proposal calls for a mandatory or a delay in development of the galleries pending, he says, additional consultation, which he states is warranted due to the lack of public support for the development. Clearly, the figures don't support that statement. This is a development which will rejuvenate and revitalize Wigan Town Centre. So why... Excuse me, Councillor Prescott. I have already asked that you respect this meeting. I'm quite happy to stay, for you to stay in the public gallery as long as you did silence to our other members are speaking. Thank you. Thank you, Madam. 
So I want to hear you ask, would anyone possibly want to prevent the, this exciting redevelopment of the galleries, which will bring employment opportunities, possibly 780 jobs to local residents and businesses. That will include a mix of retail, leisure and residential facilities, including a new market hall that clearly is needed. Well, his argument falls short in a number of ways. Firstly, he's got a sum from it as I have just illustrated. And secondly, consultation was carried out as he is fully aware as part of the pre-planning process and as part of the planning application process. And I would add that in there in the planning term, representations for or against the proposed development are considered before a decision is made and they are taken into consideration. But the lack of support for a development on its own is not a reason or a material reason to refuse or delay a planning application or, that matter, or for that matter, halt the progress once the planning permission has been granted. I would also argue, Madam Mayor, that the motion does not warrant any merit, as clearly it is, be, it is being brought before the Council this evening in preference to the petition, and therefore is nothing more than a cynical, politically motivated attempt to use the garage development in an attempt to maintain a higher political profile prior to the forthcoming May elections. Madam Mayor, the redevelopment of the Galleries Quarter is crucial and is much needed. And if you take a walk down Market Street, you'll see the validity of that statement. If you disagree with my statement, then I would ask, I was asking why we are not debating the petition that was signed by those 5,000 signatures rather than Councillor Prescott with one minute. Right. The redevelopment of the galleries will promote the regeneration of the town centre, it will deliver a vibrant new town centre that will attract new visitors and shoppers, and with that, increase footfall, which after all, is the lifeblood for any town centre. I, I, I would like people to, to stay to shop in Wigan and spend their Wigan pounds here in Wigan, not go to Manchester or to anywhere else for that matter. Madam Mayor, I, uh, I, Madam Mayor, you may have supposed I will not support this motion this evening, and I would ask members to reflect very carefully and on reflection not to support the motion for the reasons I have outlined. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Can I please ask you to be quiet in the public for our London meeting? Questions have been answered. Sorry. Councillor Marsh, do you wish to speak on the motion? Thank you. Sorry, Councillor Marsh. I miss Councillor Gerard. I do apologise. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, following on from Councillor Prescott's uh, insight, uh, I don't think I've ever been, been as angry in all of the department heads this length and short time as we've had. The main point is, is 5,000 people signed a petition to have this discussed. We can't fudge the figures that there's 300 and odd thousand people that didn't sign the petition. That is just absolutely wonderful. I, I just really can't, cannot, they're using that as some kind of defence. You know, we don't, we, we get in less than 20% in our, uh, in our votes. You know, there's 70 odd people not voting for us, I think it is, but we're still here. Now, <laughs> not all men. Not only are you using a company in, you know, by China, the Beijing company, with the worst human rights record on earth at this present time. The Women's Tennis Association has pulled out of uh, uh, China. The US and Australia have boycotted the Winter Olympics today, and we're going ahead on with this company. Getting back to the development itself. The relocation plan for these existing businesses, the life of the Great Town Centre, we still don't know what, what's happening. And now we're, we're less than a month away from we've got this closing. 
Now, you're saying about the wicked pound. Is this count in the last God knows how many years what allowed the Robin Park development to be developed so far to the town centre? The shoppers are still coming to Wigan, but just not into the Wigan town centre. And this council's decision making over the last few years has put pay to that, and that's where they're going. Not all going to Wigan and uh, Manchester and they're still coming to Wigan. The, the group lot tells you they're still coming to Wigan. It's just not the town centre. We want to make Market Street. Yes, that is the main cause. Uh, uh, the main answer. I'm not the gallop. We should be putting pressure on the landlords who, who should be using the building right at the start and get them developed and using our property. Now, for the development itself, I agree with some parts of it. We do need a new market hall closer to the town centre so businesses can bounce off to one another. But to put, is it 400 flats in, in that area? We just get parking space between two, two apartments. We want to have no parking space at all for people to actually come into the town centre. You know, and um, going on about exciting opportunity, in the briefings we had, crazy golf. That's what we're, that's what we're banking, Wigan's future. Crazy golf in the multimedia centre. I'll put it to the council that parts of the governments could be taken there, but we use a green area in there so people can actually sit out. Don't go market and we could be covered so people can go to restaurants and the, the, the market's all and we do move that to the market gate. Is to be could be used as some kind of an arena, sports venue, to actually bring people into the town for for something. I just really cannot see why we why we're doing this when we should be consulting the people and the the market traders who, who supported this town for centuries and brought more people into it are just dismissive. I really cannot uh, worry, so I will be supporting you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Are any of the members wishing to contribute to the debate? Councillor Brayla. You have had fair warning, this will be my last warning for the public gallery. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Adler. Sorry, I have a little bit of time. Uh, yes, yeah, this development, it's. Um, it's touched the heart of many people, five thousand, in fact, and possibly hundreds of thousands of people are turning over in the grave as to what you're trying to do to this wicked town, market town. Not a city, a market town. I can recall from Councillor Prescott's figures, the five thousand signatures compared to the three hundred and twenty-six thousand people in Wigan. I can recall Labour doing a survey once that 70% of the people of Wigan voted for their motions and the way they are in Wigan. We looked at how we did that survey and they contacted 1,000 Labour members who returned 700. Councillor Breedle, can you please stick to the motion? We're not discussing previous surveys. We're talking about the refurbishment of Wigan uh, Town. Thank you. So stick to oh, the Why did you go to Councillor Prescott? Because he was talking about, about the refurbishment of Wigan Town Centre. I've allowed you to speak. As I've said, I'm more than happy for you to speak, but please stick to the item. Thank you. This is what we get when you speak honestly and you challenge this Labour lot. Anyway, let's get back to that. Uh, we talk about crazy golf. We talk about shops outside the Wigan area. They build outside, that's where it's at. They build bowling alleys, let's be fair. Okay. So, what the Chris got? Hey, oh! They're a private developer in today, oh! No, too cool. Can we stick to Wigan Town Centre? You only have five minutes that we know, and that's what we want to speak on. So please stick to the refurbishment of Wigan Town Centre. Why are you keeping me corrupted, be my Because you keep going off subject and you're talking off the agenda. What are the people talking about here? No, we're not discussing AL, we're discussing Wigan Town Centre. Please stick to the item on the agenda. 
Thanks, Gabriel. You're just wasting your time. No, you are not. You are not. I'm only for you. I am absolutely sick of your conduct. When I'm speaking, I've got the floor. And it's in the rooms. I don't think it's a room, I don't know. Absolutely disgrace. Are you sitting down again, Gabriel? Yeah, I think we're That's fine. Thank you. Is there any other members wishing to speak? Councillor Marsh. Sorry, it's Councillor Marsh. Just put her hand up at last minute. Councillor Sherrod. Thank you, Madam Mayor, for allowing me to speak. I wasn't going to, actually, but I've listened to the opposition and I wanted to point out to Council Lindsay, especially. I don't know whether you were Michael of George Osborne's speech when he went to China in September of 2015, but I suggest you go home and read it. Because in that speech, what he said was, Others are wary of China. We say different. Right, can I the public gallery clear, please? Thank you. And, and, he was a fire to do business with China, Michael. Also, on the human rights issue, Thanks, no Sharon. Can we please stick to the regeneration of the rights? He's got to find out his own, his own party. I do look for two villages, but so shall I to be a discussion with you at the same time. You can just get to the answer to the agenda. Thanks for sharing, please sit down. to please be quiet. It's incredibly difficult in this room to actually hear each and every one of the speakers. I'm sure you all want to hear what's being said, as we all want to hear what's being said. So can we please respect the meeting and keep quiet while the debate's taking place? Thank you. Thanks so much. First, I'm a person, I just want to say that I have, I believe, maybe a personal, non controversial interest in this motion. Um, but I just wanted to move a lot of the points being picked up by Council Lynn Stanley and, and other councils who have spoken. But I just wanted to come back on, on several. First, I just wanted to say around what Council Prescott said about the number of people actually signed the petition. If 5,000 isn't enough, to show serious discontent with this policy, this, this proposal, then how many policies, how many projects have we based on the big listening project, which has six, around 6,000 responses, half of which were staff? So should we not reconsider those? That's it. Secondly, to succeed, any major redevelopment of Brooklyn Town Centre needs to fully incorporate the views of residents. Not just because we represent the people, but also they're the people who are going to Thank use. Councillor Prescott, do you have a point of order? Uh, not a point of order, a point of personal explanation. Uh, okay, thank you. We'll hear it now. Thanks. Excuse us, Councillor Marsh. Can I just be very clear what I was saying? Down here! Well, it's not the talk then, is it? Down here! Right. Well, but it's on that. What I was saying before, when Michael came to the, the polling before, he talked about listening to all of the people. All of the people. Not a significant few of the people. That was my point. I wasn't dismissive. I was just raising the issue that there were 326,000 people who live in this borough, and those are those people. There were five people, 5,000 people who actually responded. Can you please be quiet in the public gallery? Uh, 
So to succeed, any mini community development within the town centre needs to fully incorporate the views of residents, not only because we're here representing the residents of Wigan Borough, but also they are the people who are going to choose to go out and use the redeveloped galleries. If they don't go, the whole thing fails. Further, I just wanted to reiterate the point that Councillor Winsall made, that at no point is this about not redeveloping the galleries, it's about how it should be done. Now, the petition and Councillor Winsall, I know members of the public as well, have raised numerous questions about this proposal, including how it's going to be, what form it should take, how the scheme will be financed and operated long term. There was the suggestion that this, these kind of points were, you know, all these points should be dealt with in the planning process, and I know Councillor Prescott mentioned the planning process in particular and the, the comments and objections that people made. However, a lot of these aren't actually material planning considerations, for example, for financing of it. And that's why we really should hit the pause button, speak to residents, find out what they want in the scheme, and then come up. It might be that, you know, once the, a proper consultation has taken place, the plan's still the same. But I just wanted to reiterate re 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 the point that it's vital that we speak to residents and we should take this opportunity. Thank you, Councillor Wynne. Councillor Wynne, and I will invite you to sum up on the motion. Uh, thank you very much, Madam Mayor. Um, it's been an interesting debate. Uh, I'm sorry it stopped, Councillor Sherry, because I was more than happy to deal with the George Osborne thing, because there's lots of things I didn't agree with George Osborne about. That was one of them. The other thing was giving me indirectly elected mayor as well. So, uh, but when it comes to this, uh, Councillor Prescott um, accused me of cynically using this uh, politically to raise my profile. Well, it was not the same to you, Kevin. You use the word cynically to raise the profile in advance of the local elections. Can we have a point of explanation, please? I said raising a profile politically. I didn't say you particularly like <laughs> Right, okay, all right. <laughs> okay, good. Okay. We'll play with the semantics. Thanks to Winston. The fact of the matter is. Continue to sum up I will, the I will, I will, I will, I will sum up the debate. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, so, in essence, it isn't uh, to raise cynically to do it to raise the issue. This issue has been raised by people in this borough, and I actually think 5,000 people is a lot, considering that 4,728 people responded to the Clean Air Zone uh, uh, survey, and that was across the whole of GM. Yeah, so, is so it has something to do with the regeneration of Wigan Town Centre? Well, please it does have something to do with Wigan Town Centre. However, the fact of the matter is that this isn't, this is about ensuring that we have a town centre fit for the future. We've not, at the moment, we haven't, and we need to make sure that we have. This scheme will not do that. It's going to destroy our centre, our market centre, it's going to destroy our retailers. We are going to literally drive people away. We've, we're going to get it wrong, and you're going to drive people away. I hope, seriously, I am wrong. But, you've not, this is your last chance to do something about it. Fail to do it now, you're going to do it for the rest of your life. Sorry, Councillor Prescott, you've had your say. Come on. Is this the point of order, Councillor Prescott? Madam, Madam, I'm simply inviting whether it's a personal explanation or a point of order. What I wanted to say is the comments that were made by Councillor Winston towards the end of his response. When he talked about the clean air zone and the, and the, uh, the consultation that was held there, Remember, the clean air zone is a, a government directive, not something that we have personal direct control of. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Can we put the report to the vote, please? The motion to the vote, sorry. Can we take the vote, please? Motion isn't carried. It's 
sognare. Can we vote on who's against the motion, please? Thank you. The motion has been submitted by Councillor Samantha Brown. Thanks, Lord Brown. Just wait a minute, my lady. Thank you. I 
Aquí va a Welcome to the chamber, welcome to the room. Yeah. Thank you for this motion. I can uh, all actually agree that as you can tell from me in question earlier, but some points in the we may have to practice what we preach. Uh, we've just tonight we've just put a three percent increase up on rent tonight. Which will take I mean it doesn't sound a lot, but that will take some three four hundred euros uh, tonight. So I'm hoping we can put a caveat on that and, and bring this the increase that we have put on tonight. Especially if we put in motion with the same same agenda. Asking about that. And also about completing works. I know it's not going to be a magic wand uh, on our own stuff. But a lot of our stuff is down. You know, I'm pretty sure a lot of councillors here are going to get uh, inquiries about, about uh, the standard of their accommodation. So I'm hoping that if the increase that we do put on to that, that every single penny of it is put back into our own stock and we're prepared for the down insulation, viewing this, and in particular, <coughs> Thank you. Are there any other members wishing to speak? Councillor Marshall. Councillor Anderton, thank you. Thank you, Madam Mayor, for allowing me to speak on this. I just want to say I fully, fully support my colleagues in bringing this motion forward tonight. I think it's very important that we do bring this forward. I do recognise as well there are many good landlords in this borough. There's really good practice out there that we need to look at and show them they are leading by example as well in this sector. But looking at my law in particular in the West, we're seeing some of the rents increasing, not by 3%, but by 20%. That's outrageous. That's putting people far beyond affordability here. So comparing what we've done tonight, 3%, around £10 per month approximately, compared to £150 in some severe cases. That is not right, and that is not normal. Many are left with leaking houses. I support what Councillor Gerard is saying. We see this in the private sector, and I think more so uh, than ever before. Leaking houses, flunking back doors not working. Um, repairs taking six months or longer. These are just some of the cases we've had uh, of 130 houses that we've managed to get around recently taken over by a new landlord. Now, some people might not mind paying more if they're getting a good quality service, if they're getting the repairs done in a timely fashion, whilst acknowledging the council, yes, we are doing our best, we put a service in place, and then wrapping welfare support around those people as well. That can't be ignored. But 3% versus is 20% plus. £10 versus £150 a month. That's, that's, that's not wrong, that's not right. The Citizens Advice Wigan Borough, with my colleague, Councillor Merritt, as well, we've seen, we work with them on the Board of Trustees, and we've seen the number of cases coming through where private landlords are delivering poor quality, delivering unaffordable, run-down, horrible houses. In the cases where people are struggling to live with just one tap working in a house, with absolutely no central heater for weeks on end, these cases cannot continue. And it's up to the national government to step in here. But acknowledging as well, there is an overheated housing market at the moment, but it's been left unregulated. That's why it's overheated. Okay, this is why it's driving rents in my ward on Wigan Road, on the streets of Wigan Road, a three-bedroom property, £750 a month. Now, if you've got a free deposit going on that as well, which most private landlords want to put a month's advance, that's £1,500 you've got to find before you can even get a roof over your head. So these are kind of the real stark issues that are facing many residents in Lee and across this borough. And again, my colleague mentioned, makes reference to uh, our own people league taking this opportunity at PM Questions to ask something completely different, rather than pre the pressing questions that face many of our residents in the league, okay? I and those residents have written to our MP, and all we got back was a letter about past things that have been done. COVID legislation, which was a temporary ban on evictions, and a permanent ban, a temporary ban. Some welfare measures, which yeah, have been very, very good and very, very welcome. But those are coming to an end through those. We have to look at well, what can we do once those end. There's no solutions yet. Um, Councillor Gambles, and again, uh, my colleagues have said, Generation Rent Shelter have lobbied the government and in 2019 of April, um, they promised to end the Section 21 no fault evictions. 
In May 2022, again, we've asked for this, and again, it will come later this year. We're still waiting, okay? One will for them, one for everyone else. Another missed opportunity, again, at PMQs to raise these real issues around universal credit, cost of living, and everything else. So, finally, I just want to mention some of the good work that's taking place. I think we have to acknowledge those good landlords and good client landlords. I've heard some recently for Brown themselves to work with the Neighbours Project. They've taken over two houses in the Lee West area in Central Lee, and they've handed those over, they've done them all, handed them over to uh, the Council's Ethical Lettings Agency. I think they need a good mention to lead by example when charities and other organisations can be encouraged to come forward. Just around the two minute one minute one. Thank you very much, Madam Mayor. Um, these are provided with affordable solutions. We need to think differently, but this council is intervening, and so are many other, many other organisations and charities in this area. So thank you very much for the time to speak to Madam Mayor. Thank you. Do any of the members like to contribute? Leader. Yeah, thank you, Madam Mayor, because I think it's significantly important that the motion has come, come before us tonight. It is pertinent that uh, questions could have been asked and were. Uh, and certainly, I think there should be an opportunity now, as we agree this motion tonight, to lobby government. And therefore, and I think it's better to go on a united front, more so than ever. And I'm now going to ask, Madam Mayor, that this is a day in the Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Leader. Thank you, Madam Mayor, for allowing me to speak. Well, I'm just going to speak as speaking to the residents who are the private sector and every councillor in this room. Most of our issues with private landlords and the condition of that our residents are suffering. For example, mold on the windows, trying to put wallpaper onto the walls that are so damp it won't stick. Sleeping, families sleeping in one room so they can keep warm. This day and age, sleeping in one room to keep warm. I think we should be asking for more than that. Constantly having to go to the doctors with coughs, colds. Why? Because of state of the housing conditions. Children having time off school, missing their education. Families, mother, father, if they're lucky enough to work. Having time off work. That's an insult it, to, to think with the little money that they've got, because they've not been able to get into work through no fault of their own, they've got a deduction in, in the money. When they ask the landlord to do the repairs, they don't get done. And in some cases, it's years with thieving, asking the landlords to do this repair. They still don't get done. Then the, the landlords inform them that there's going to be a rent increase. Now, Councillor Anderson has spoken on that part of it. But they can't afford it. They just cannot afford a rent increase. Come on, let's go it up. Gas is going up. Even food is going up. Now, the landlord's telling them that the rents are going up. Then they get informed that they cannot pay the rent increase they will serve eviction. Now what does that mean? Serve eviction. That means they're out. With no time, only a date to move. What does that mean? It means these residents become homeless. And by coming homeless, this puts more pressure on the council's resources. Which are really resources to the limit at the moment. And our residents, our residents do not deserve to be living in these conditions. It's heartbreaking, and I'm sure it is for every one of us in this room. When we see the families in a state, they just don't know what to do. They don't know where to go. And I am asking you today to support Council Brown's motion, lobby the government, 
especially the community secretary, to bring forward meaningful rights for private renters, to secure tenant tenancies of nat national register, bring an end to evictions and discrimination. This is one step forward that we can do for our residents, show them that we care, show them that, that we support them, and show that we are trying our best to help them. And I'm asking you once again, please support this motion. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Brennan. Councillor Brennan, I know that you just some up on the motion. Very sorry, everyone who wanted to vote, can you please put your hand up again so we can get everyone's name? We haven't got the electronic. Are there any abstainers? Are there any against? No, so it is you now. Well, you voted, didn't you, Councillor March? Yeah. Party out. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. In moving this motion, I mean, primarily as a lead councillor, I'm concerned about a lead town centre, and I hope I can get a bit more unanimity than we did on Wigan Town Centre. But for me, this is a real issue. Um, so, back in 2015, when we were looking at the licensing regulations for the borough, uh, a cumulative impact zone was placed on Wigan Town Centre and Lee Town Centre. Now, those were to prevent or minimise alcohol related antisocial behaviour. Uh, and there was concern from the police and the council about that. And so, in 2016, that was put into our licensing regulations. Um, actually, the world's changed, hasn't it? significant amount. So we had the pandemic and COVID, which has significantly impacted on the hospitality sector and the leisure sector. We've also had an acceleration of the drive towards online shopping and deliveries and the decline of retail. So over the past two years, you know, we've had that situation of uh, accelerating that move to more online shopping and, and less uh, people going into uh, retail. So, so in actual fact, we need to reimagine uh, the smaller town centres like these. And, and one of the issues for me is that because of the Q, Q well, I call it CIZ, I don't have to keep saying that. Because of the CIZ, um, Leisure and hospitality has not been encouraged in Wigan Town Centre. Now, since January this year, in terms of the CIZ, uh, there is a presumption against license, uh, approving a license application. But since January this year, recognising the difficulties of the sector, and all that, then uh, our licensing department have been a bit more flexible in their application of that. But actually, it's not seen uh, any increase in hospitality or leisure industry in, in the main town centre of London. And actually, the antisocial behaviour 
that is being displayed in the wintertime cycle is primarily because there is very little footfall in the evening or during the night because of the lack of uh, things there. And so what I'm requesting the council to do is to proactively support the sector and particularly from my point of view within the retail centre, but generally across the borough. Now, the CIZ was set up by a legal protest and can only be removed by a legal protest. And so what I'm asking is that process to review the CIZ takes place as soon as possible. And from my, from my position, with a view to actively encouraging applications, for investment in bars, quality restaurants within the town centre, because we have to reimagine town centres to less retail and more about hospitality and leisure to attract people to the town centre. And certainly from my point of view in Lee Town Centres, I want to see not it closed at night, very few people around and antisocial behaviour. But I would like us to actively encourage, to remove the CRT and actively encourage investment in leisure, in hospitality, to actually regenerate that town centre. And, and making the evening and nighttime economy uh, invigorate that by promoting that more diverse, family friendly, capital culture environment there, which I believe the increased footfall will actually reduce antisocial behaviour or the antisocial behaviour we're experiencing. So really what I'm asking for is recognising uh, the change in shopping habits, the change in uh, the way people uh, spend their time, and by offering the impact of COVID to, to now regenerate the hospitality and leisure industry, that we seek to do this as soon as possible. So like I said, I'm expecting this to be less um, contentious than the Wigan uh, Town Centre one, but uh, I would be grateful if people would support this because I actually feel that following COVID, we need to reinvest, we need to encourage investment, and the type of investment that's needed in Lee is exactly this type of investment. And, uh, I, would, I would be grateful. I'm surprised Michael didn't mention or ask us if anybody had been to Pepper Piggins World, but you know, because it seems to be his party and he did a sort of strategy. And I know you didn't like those jobs, but, but, uh, but I, hope, I hope generally people can support this and that it can be rebalanced and we can have some, something that will generate and regenerate the town centre of Lee by removing this restriction. I'm not sure whether it is the actual CIZ which has deterred people from making uh, applications or what have you. I don't think applications have been turned down. I think actually the CIZ has deterred people from making applications. So I think as soon as we can start the process of reviewing that and legally taking it off, then we have that. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Kinder. Is this motion seconded? Thank you. Would you like to speak now, Councillor Anderson? We reserve your right to speak later. We reserve. Councillor McLaughlin, would you wish to speak? Thank you, Governor. <clears throat> I haven't intended to speak tonight, uh, so. I haven't got anything actually planned. Uh, I do hope that I can add to the debate though in a, in a kind of visual way. Uh, I, I'm not clear how whatever we decide to do uh, would be uh, dealt with in the week. You know, whether, whether the same principles would apply. Uh, I think as most of you know, I'm the elected representative for Wigan Central and there is a CIZ uh, operating in that ward. Now, uh, 
I would like to run this out of it because with respect to Councillor Cunningham, I thought it was a little one side. All we talked about was the businesses and why not be a cotton union and all that. But you know, there wasn't anything wrong with that. But what I find in the Women's Centre is that the people in the Women's Centre, uh, the residents, and more especially those who live closest to me, greatly appreciate the CIZ. Uh, it, it solves a lot of problems for them. And it may not be quite the same in women, but I think we have a problem in women that the town centre is gradually pushing out, particularly into the res residential area, which is swinging. And that we need to think of residents. After all, it is the residents who vote us in the seats that we all occupy rather than the businesses. And I would respectfully suggest that the residents have a more, more important consideration in this respect than the businesses. Thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor McLaughlin. Are there any other members wishing to speak? Councillor. Sorry, Councillor Prescott, then Councillor Gerard. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I'll be very brief with just a clarification. The PNAIR, the Plymouth Impact Policy was introduced in 2016. The PNAIR zone that uh, Councillor Cooler compared to applied to a certain part of the town centre. Ditto also at an area that, that it applied to Wigan Town Centre. And, and it was, it's provided for in the 2003 licensing act which was introduced this legislation and it's based on, on, on statistics that are provided by GMP about the, the kind of replaced transportation area that we were, was occurring at that time. Um, the reason that we voted it at that time, I, I did it, I was then chair of the Regulation and Licensing Committee, it was introduced at that time, and it was basically to prevent the proliferation of what we call vertical breaking establishments. So those kind of, those kind of areas where people just came in, basically they are reluctantly and co op with those coming from the streets. And what it was designed to encourage was a kind of family orientated, different way of enjoying yourself at the night time in our town centre. And that was its purpose, its whole purpose. Quite understand where my guests come from, but I do see where, 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 where people's coming from as well. Clearly, over the period of the last 18 months, there have not been those statistics to support this, this continuation. And clearly, without those statistics to support this continuation, there's no purpose for it to continue. So I think if we're going to do this, it has to be recognised that what Peter's talking about is that part of the a specific to. Thank you, Madam. Thank you, Councillor Prescott. Councillor Anderton. Councillor Gerard. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, thank you, Councillor Cormac, for fetching this morning. Uh, believe it or not, I am in agreement that uh, the Town Centre does need this obviously for review. Uh, we are seeing in Hamilton, you don't know there, so I'm seeing small bars only, uh, beaches, and the nightlife in Hamilton is absolutely buzzing at the moment. But the only difference in Hamilton that, that we've got at, uh, we have got at, we don't have which causes the, the main threat of antisocial behaviour. So I think that's something that we, we have to tackle you know, to have like an happy medium. Uh, you have some nights that do like turn out to be very early hours of the morning, all e rated, and that's where the antisocial behaviour comes from. So that has my view. Like I said, we've got to turn the residents' concerns as well. Uh, yeah, and Lee, Lee's been the same week to me as Lee. I had a retail bar, large supermarkets, all around the town centre. And unfortunately, Lee town centre, no matter how much money we spend on sport over the years, still hasn't been able to recover. So 
we do need a, an outfit that will also need adjustments as well with obstacles removed. So we can go from this, this person as well, yes, I mean, full fair. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Jarrah. Councillor Anderton. Madam Mayor, again, for letting me speak on this. Uh, again, I'll throw my support behind this as a second. Um, I think there's a clear consensus about our train centres um, and our district centres that they'll thrive and be strengthened if we make them destinations and places where we have experiences as well. So I think through these arrangements and proposing this review, we want to see that businesses that serve coffee during the day can carry on into that evening and nighttime economy. They can have a life beyond just the daytime to serve maybe cocktails, the bistro, the multi purpose, and what they want to do, and also exploit the nighttime economy as well, provide a different offering, basically. So I think this motion is a clear message to the hospitality and leisure industry as well bars, restaurants, uh, bistro, but again, not just saying pubs and, and that, it's a broad perspective of the organisations that we want to speak to and want to encourage to support and help encourage them to set up in Lee as well. So speaking about those licensing arrangements, it's not a kind of free for all that will ensue after this. It's about quality. It's about having the right kinds of businesses come forward and ensure that that cumulative impact zone is reviewed and in my opinion, in this case, removed. So good quality, good practices should be paid and hopefully will be paid uh, by the council to allow me to move with the times and also provide um, an opportunity for a different offering. I think we responded to Councillor Murphy's point. I think each place is different, and we must respect that as well. We do the same assessment and have a clear, considered uh, approach to Wigan, as I think we're trying to do here in Lee as well. Uh, but treating the places as different, and as we all know, Lee has its own distinct identity as well, doesn't it? So it's about breaking down those barriers so the sector can grow in Lee, can be encouraged. So I think moving forward with things like the Leather Up Project that we want to put in here as well, it's about empowering businesses due through this, empowering business leaders through our stakeholder groups, like the Community Wealth Building Consortium, for example, You're listening to businesses, but yes, listening to residents as well. But residents are hungry in Lee for a different offer. Residents are looking for something different. So supporting this, this motion for me today is very important to give a coordinated and uh, fully response to those people who want to invest business leaders uh, to come to Lee. Areas like the top of Bradshaw Gate, good starting point maybe, emerging restaurant culture down there as well. We've got the bus station, the guided bus where you know it does bring people in, it does take people out. So making sure that there are the hot spots and the right junctions if you like uh, to make the most of our cinema, our restaurant scene and the busway with the, the great transport links that are emerging for Lee. So finally, safety has been mentioned as well. I think safety is absolutely paramount in any evening and nighttime economy. And that's why this review and any change in arrangements should be consulted with GMP. I'm sure GMP will support this with the new neighbourhood team that is looking after the town centre, so it's going to shape up the policing team around me. And we want to continue to fight for better policing through Councillor Anderson's, uh, Councillor Anderson's uh, support as well. Fight for better policing in the context of national arrangements that we currently have. We will always make that case, but the circumstances change, the vigilance and be aware of that as well. So I'm happy to support this motion. Thank you, Councillor Anderson. Councillor Conrad, I'm now invite you to sum up on the motion. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, if you notice the motion, it says uh, to initiate a process for the review of the cumulative impact zones. Because within the licensing regulations that were set out in 2016, there was a CIZ for Lee Town Centre and a CIZ for Wigan Town Centre. And like I said, there is a legal process to go through. And what I'm asking for is that the process to start. And it involves public consultation. So if the view of the public consultation from people in Lee, which I would hope and advocate would ask or welcome the removal of the CIZ, the public consultation in Wigan may well be about retaining the CIZ for Wigan, and that's quite up to them. So, Councillor McLaughlin, it's just the review of the CIZ, and I would be advocating that Lee Town Centre takes it off. 
Break them into one sentence and throw a few things down for them to walk along. The Bible says that God told us to be ready in, um, in life. Uh, when Council Prescott's talk about the original uh, CIZ that was put on in 2016, and that was in consultation with the police, I understand that that may well have been a consideration at the time, and I'm not disputing that. The, you know, that, that decision was a right or a wrong decision. It was supported by the police, it was supported by the council. It was aimed at reducing alcohol-related antisocial behaviour. But I think the world's moved on since 2016, and there's been impacts on us uh, through the pandemic that have brought about the need to change this. And the recognition that certainly in Lee, a lot of the antisocial behaviour that takes place in the evening and night is not alcohol related and is actually taking place because it's effectively deserted and closed in the town centre. So I actually believe that in order to respond to the impact of the hospitality and uh, COVID on the hospitality industry, to actually regenerate in a way that Councillor Anderson talked about, about quality bars, beef straws, when it's important that we start the process of reviewing the, the CIZ. And certainly, whilst Councillor McLaughlin will campaign for the Wigan one to be retained, I will certainly be campaigning for the Lee one to be removed. But it can't be removed, it can't be retained until we start reviewing the process. And this motion is about starting as soon as possible the process. And Councillor Gerard, quite right in that Abbotton has seen a, a regeneration in terms of the night time and evening economy with bars and restaurants. Some of those people who've invested in Abbotton, I know, wanted to invest in Lee but were put off because of the CIZ. So actually, that's why I'm talking about removing that and actively encouraging and proactively encouraging those businesses to all that within the budget. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Can I put the report to the vote? For? Are there any against? The vote is carried. The motion has been submitted by Councillor Watson. Six operational tours and 20 years service with Her Majesty's finest regiment, Counter Clyde Morgan, the 1st Battalion Irish Guards, and not the Welsh Guards, uh, which I'm sure is something we can debate later on at the point. Okay, so the motion itself is just generally, uh, I don't know what the time's getting on, uh, but on the 17th of the World Rush Legion, uh, I think it would be fitting that we uh, should support our veterans by offering them new gym membership. Now, this current offer to Place by this council, which is only for the first 12 months post service. Um, and it is a quite a good offer at a reduced rate for that membership uh, itself. So, ask the question what is a military veteran? A military veteran is a person who voluntarily walks into the Army, Navy, or Royal Air Force Base Office and essentially writes out a blank check for their life. With many, such as myself and others in this room, who have had to write their words as a teenager before deploying on near fatal operational tours. A veteran is loyal, a veteran is selfless, and a veteran is willing to make an ultimate sacrifice for their friends, families, communities, and country. However, many veterans are showing up in service with physical and mental injuries, more than often both. The gym provides a place of comfort, routine, in familiar, in familiar surroundings for veterans, and of course, there's the added bonuses of keeping fit, and of course, the enhanced positive mental health aspect of exercise as well. This year marks the centenary of the Royal British Legion, a charity that was set up 100 years ago to support our veterans after the Great War 
due to the failings of society at that time. More pertinently, the continued failings of both successive local and national governments in terms of the aftercare to our veterans uh, community. So, a hundred years later, what has changed? Regrettably, due to the success of charities such as the Royal British Legion, SAFA, Combat Stress, the list goes on and on. Consecutive governments have allowed these charities to burden the responsibility of our veterans aftercare. Yet, the last time that I checked, it was the British government that sent us to war, not these such charities. So, so I know we've signed to military covenant, which in my opinion is just wasted words and needs to be law, because we all know that actions speak louder than words. However, I do acknowledge that we as a council are improving our offer uh, to our vast veterans community every year, but we can and must do more. We as a council pride ourselves with leading the way in every aspect of improving all of our communities, and this small gesture of giving something back to uh, all of our veterans in the world for their service and their sacrifice is a step in the right direction. Veterans from outside the borough have informed me that other councils around the country are already ahead of us by offering their veterans complimentary gym memberships as a local thank you for their service to their country. And now that our leisure facilities are back under council control, we should definitely follow their lead. To summarise, as this motion is going direct to the cabinet and will not be debated tonight, Debated tonight, I urge the cabinet and our members to consider where we would be today without our veterans and to honour their sacrifice by providing them with free gym memberships. Thank you for allowing to speak to this motion, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Watson. As the motion is being referred to cabinet, then there will be no further debate on this motion. Sorry, Councillor Gerard, are you still happy to second the motion? Would you like to speak on it? Thank you very much for wanting to speak on this uh, motion. I've also got personal interest uh, in being a, a Royal Navy veteran in uh, that senior service call. Uh, I think my uh, free gym membership is already started. To step so I must be taking tonight. <laughs> it wasn't it too, too small, I mean. Yeah, but I'm fully behind the motion, obviously, because being in the force is obviously you, you, you train, you know, you, you, you physically fit. As you can see, you know, you know that the points soon pile on when you're you, you sort of that kind of lifestyle. So, not only physically, but mentally as well, you know. And, you're making friends. It's, it's very hard in the leave the uh, forces. You, you form right back onto the street, basically, and you start to from scratch making friends in civil, civilian life. And it's, it is hard because you're not in that, in that uh, environment before coming out. It is, uh, it, it is hard to adjust. But being in the, the gym, the gym or something similar, you do get that way you are, that routine back into your life. The healthy body, the healthy mind, um, and I'm hoping that when it does come up again, we can have the support that some of the free members have. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Gerard. Councillor Gerard, you're still happy to second the motion? Yes, I'm happy to. Thank you, Councillor Gerard. Thank you for your attendance. That concludes the business for this evening. Another search in the hall. Can you all please rise?